We are live for another Monday Madness. I cannot believe this is Monday Madness number five. This is the fifth time we've sat down on a Monday and chatted about what's caught my attention on the internet. And we've started, believe it or not, two minutes early. For, so for those of you who've got notifications switched on, you're going to be joining into the broadcast just while I have a little bit of a chit chat about what's been happening last week. And in fact, last week was a really interesting week. If you didn't see my video about the iPhone 10, then please do check that out. The mystery has now been solved on that, so I won't be covering anything about that in this particular broadcast. But that was really interesting. Also, the Asus Zenfone 4 turned up. That's sitting just here on my desk. I'll be talking to you about that in a little while, just a little bit of an update before I do my review later on this week. And also, we're of course leading up to Christmas. We have got a whole week, and then of course Christmas lands on Monday the 25th, which is uh, very, very exciting. I know some people have uh, stopped work already for the holiday season, and they're having an extended break, which is very, very cool. But I'm going to be coming out live to you pretty much every day in the lead up to Christmas, so that I can share with you some really cool videos, so do stay tuned for that. Now I can see a lot of you have got notifications switched on either that or you do follow me on Twitter uh, because we have already got quite a few in the chat and this is all about the live interaction this particular video Monday Madness I share with you three or four topics that I have found interesting on the internet over the last few days and then also if you want me to cover anything you found interesting then you can put that down in the live chat and I'll try and search it with the power of the internets and actually talk about it on this very broadcast. So do that in the live chat. There is also the super chat there. So if you want your question or your comment actually highlighted, then the super chat feature is there for that purpose. But as you know, I try and answer as many questions as I can. So before we move on to the topics for today, let me have a look and see who is in the chat. We've got Alfie G, we've got Chris Bryson, Mippy YouTube and WGH Fazzy. The first four in the chat get a big shout out and a big hello, so get in early next time. And we've also got, I think I saw a question in here already. Uh, Pap Sandor Barna, hopefully the OnePlus 5 to remains your daily driver. I'll be giving you an update on that. It isn't my daily driver for this week, and that's because I'm testing the Asus Zenfone 4. I believe in giving it sort of a proper test, so actually using it as my smartphone. And this is only a loan device, so when I finish doing my review of this, then the OnePlus 5T will go back in my pocket and in my hand as a daily driver. Um, we've also got WGH Fazzy. Hey, before we get crazy, can you please recommend me a phone between the OnePlus 5T and the Google Pixel 2 XL versus Samsung S8? Wow, that is not a hard task that's very easy for me to recommend it's going to be the oneplus 5t purely because of the price point you can get the 64 gigabyte model for uh, 449 pound in the uk equivalent sort of money in other countries as well and then the um, 128 gigabyte model for 499 pound in the uk uh, and it's just a fantastic phone now that's not to say the other two are bad i know one person who switched from the s8 to the oneplus 5t and the Google Pixel 2 XL would have been a no-brainer if it hadn't been for the actual issues with the screen, like the screen angles, uh, screen non-responsiveness, and the burning issues as well, some of which have been sort of dealt with in a software update, not entirely. I'll also be talking about the Google Pixel phones in this very video. It's one of the topics for later on today. Uh, WGH Fazzy is saying camera. Do you mean the camera I'm using for the broadcast or the camera? On the smartphone if you're referring to the smartphone then the s8 out of the three has got a really good smartphone the pixel 2 xl is probably the best and the oneplus 5t is probably about 92 percent of what the pixel 2 xl can produce hello to darren as well thank you very much for tuning in and of course to sugart or sugark tv good evening to you thanks very much again for tuning into the live broadcast so anyway Let's move on to do the little bit of an update on the Asus Zenfone 4. Now, I'm still testing this. I'm still not ready to do my full review. In fact, I think I'm scheduled to do it. I'm just looking at my notes there. 
on Saturday, so that would have given me a whole week and two days roughly with this smartphone. I'm really enjoying it though. Battery life is epic, very, very good battery life, easily getting a day between charges. And the cameras on the back, wow, really good. Not the highest megapixel rating. I think uh, it's either 12 megapixels on the back and the secondary one's eight, and then the front one's eight. But the back, cameras gather so much light, they've got really large pixels on it in smartphone terms, and it's working extremely well. I also really like the design. Very, very nice design and the build quality. I mentioned this in my first look. It's just proving to be a very, very nice smartphone to use. Uh, the screen as well, very, very nice. And in fact, I will just cover off. Let me go to this screen view with you. Let's take a look at the main specifications because I can't remember all of them. I'm still actually sort of doing my research as to where this would sit uh, in today's market. It's sort of a mid-core uh, smartphone. Uh, but very, very well specified, 5.5 inch display, 1920 by 1080 super IPS plus display, and it does go very bright. bright. It says 600 nits of brightness here, and I can really believe that. Uh, we've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon Octa-Core processor, uh, either a 660 or a 630, depending upon the market or the model that you buy. Four gigabytes of RAM, and then the cameras, as I expected, one is 12 megapixels and the other one is... Uh, 8 megapixels on the back, so we've got this sort of dual camera setup on the back. Really nice and large uh, pixels on there as well. And um, then, of course, we've also got 4K UHD video recording, which is really nice to see. Or slow motion video at 1080p, so nice specification here. Uh, 8 megapixels on the front camera. And then the speakers are dual speakers, and they are really good quality. And then we've got all the normal specification that you would expect to see on a smartphone. So just to touch on that, the speakers are really good. I've watched probably about half a dozen YouTube videos on here. Uh, the screen makes for a really nice viewing experience, but the speakers certainly add to it. Uh, I also took some photos. I'll give you an early look at some photos I took. I took this one here, which has got really good colour accuracy. I also took this Christmassy one here. Again, you'll see these in the full review. I'll actually put them on screen for you. And then another one of the Christmas decorations. And they're just really nice colours. And although the detail, because of the resolution, isn't that high, the detail when you go into the photo to a normal sort of viewing level is very good indeed. And, and I say, the colour rendition, really very, very good. So I've been very, very pleased with how this has been performing. It's also got a fingerprint sensor just down here as well which again works extremely well no wireless charging even though i did have it sitting on the desk here on a wireless charger that was just there purely to sit it up on the desk so i'll be giving you my full review of the asus zenfone 4 later in the week but let's go back to the monday madness format we're going to cover some of the topics that i've got lined up for today that have made me go oh my goodness or wow uh, whatever term you want to give it they've been really quite surprising and then i'll come back to the questions in the live chat. Uh, if I miss any super chats while I'm just covering off the main topics, then please do let me know, but I shouldn't miss any. So here we go. Let's go on to the first topic of conversation for today. And that relates to a website for the BBC. There is a link to this particular article down in the video description, so full credit to BBC. Uh, millions of Britons miss out on decent broadband speeds. Now, if I was unlucky enough to have these sort of broadband speeds, I would be very, very disappointed. Uh, I can remember back to dial-up, and, and it was an absolute nightmare. And because of what I do with the live broadcasts, if I had these sort of speeds, and the target is 10 mega, megabits per second down and 1 megabyte or megabit per second up, uh, very, very bad indeed. Is it megabytes or megabits? I've got a, I've got a block in... Uh, or my thought process there for a moment. But here we go. 1.6 million people last year uh, were in this position. 4% of properties cannot get broadband speed fast enough to meet their needs, which is absolutely crazy today. Uh, 10 down and one up split is the specification for Ofcom's proposed universal soft service offering, which every property in the UK should be able to receive. Uh, it's just not good enough nowadays. It really isn't. It says here also, further down in the article, about 58% of premises can get 4G signal indoors, up 40, up from 40% in 2016. So it's all to do with these um, 
the, the, the speed that we're getting our internet served at. And as I say, I couldn't cope with those sort of speeds. I'm very lucky in the fact that I can actually get Virgin Media here. So I'm on 200 uh, megabits per second download speed or megabytes per second. Goodness, I can't even remember. But anyway, I'm on a really good speed, 200 down. <laughs> the terminology has escaped me for some reason. 200 down I get and roughly about 16 up, which is very, very good. I would trade some of that download speed for upload speed because that would help me more. I'd quite happily have uh, 100 down and 50 up. That would be sort of the ideal situation. I would sort of trade that in for that sort of service. But it'd be really interesting to hear from you guys uh, in the live chat what sort of speed you get. So, so what internet service provider you use, whereabouts you are, i.e. UK or another country, and um, uh, what speed you get as well. And whether you find them acceptable, whether they're sort of consistent or whether they drop off in the evening, etc. Do you get your bandwidth throttled at certain times of day? You know, let me know in the live chat. I'd be really interested to, to learn that from you. So anyway, whilst you are chatting away in the live chat, let's just do the second topic for today. Uh, this is uh, an Apple topic. Again, this is linked down in the video description. Full credit to Mac Rumors. Apple is currently sold out of AirPods until January. This is absolutely crazy. People are loving the Apple AirPods. Uh, I tried some and I found them to be okay audio-wise. Well, in fact, very good audio-wise, but not so much comfort-wise. I think it's an acquired taste whether these are comfortable in your ear or not. For me, they weren't 100% comfortable. But people are finding these very, very uh, popular. $159 in the US. I think they're £149 in the UK. Uh, now, I checked online on the Apple Store, and they were currently at seven business day shipping. So they're not entirely sold out. We've just got that lead time back, which did seem to disappear at some stage. Uh, so very, very popular choice. Uh, I would struggle with these because when I tried some, although I was happy with the actual audio quality, I wasn't happy with the comfort factor and also they didn't feel very secure in my ears. I prefer to have something that's sort of got a wire around so that if they did fall out, at least I would notice or they would be left hanging around my neck. Uh, so let me know again if you've got AirPods and if you really like them or if indeed you've ordered some for Christmas and you're keeping your fingers crossed that they come in time for Christmas Day. So before I move on to the next topic of uh, conversation, let's have a look in the chat and see what we've got here. We've got Matthias Di Paolo saying, hello, have you noticed any overlapping in the OnePlus 5T screen sides with the official screen protector? Well, I haven't got the official screen protector on mine. I've still got the film one that came inside the box. Uh, I haven't put the glass one on yet and there was no overlapping on the, um, on the plastic one that was pre-applied. So maybe, just maybe, you've got the glass one on there and there is some overlapping. I haven't looked myself personally. Uh, if there is, then, and it interferes with a case, then I'd possibly con contact OnePlus and ask them if they could sort that out for you. Because I don't think that their cases should interfere with their own screen protector. So do give them a shout. I'm sure they will help out uh, through their support channel. Uh, David Hepworth, are you interested in the iMac Pro? Very high price. David, you did this to me last week. Last Monday, you asked me a question that related to the very next topic of conversation. So on that note, and David is not a plant. He's not put into the room, into the live chat, just to prompt me to change topics. But you did this to me. It's just blown my mind. You, you read my mind again. And this, in fact, is the third topic of conversation. So let's switch across to talking about the iMac Pro. Uh, we have got the iMac Pro now available to uh, order or to pre-order. Uh, it's currently shipping in one to two weeks for delivery. And I wanted to talk to you about this because, yeah, of course I'm interested. I've got an iMac, which works absolutely fine. Edits 4K video very, very efficiently. Uh, got no complaints about the performance of it at all. But I'm so glad you asked the question because this is the main title of this particular broadcast. Uh, crazy Apple prices. Now the iMac Pro is not for everyone, but just look at this specification first of all. So this is the stock configuration, like the base, cheapest one you can buy. Uh, and the prices are comparable roughly, it's about 4,999 in the US instead of 4,899 pounds in the UK. So for this money you're getting a 3.2 gigahertz eight core Intel Xeon W processor, 
turbo boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, 32 gig of RAM, you can go up to 128, one terabyte SSD, a Radeon Pro Vega 56 with 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a 27 inch Retina 5K P3 display. So, a similar display to the regular iMac, I think, uh, but possibly a bit more uh, colour gamut on it. Uh, very high specification, but it is a crazy price. This is why it's not for everyone. Uh, let's just um, go to configure. Here we go. So, we're starting at 4899. Let's spec this baby out. Let's go up to the 10 core processor with um, 128 gigabytes of memory and 2 gig of storage. 9,039 pounds are up to now. Wow. 9,039 pounds. Let me upgrade the processor to the top spec one. 10,479 pounds. My bank account is currently weeping with anticipation as to what else we can upgrade. Let's put a 4 terabyte SSD in there to take the price to 12,279. And then we don't want the magic mouse. All they're giving us is a magic mouse too. That's absolutely crazy. We want the magic trackpad. 12,329. We could add the magic mouse back in and add another 99 pounds. We could add a visa mount. And then let's just say we haven't got Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. Look at that. 12 thousand nine hundred and seven pounds and 88 uh, sorry 98 pence now the sort of best deal you're getting in this configuration and i am joking this is tongue-in-cheek of course is the free delivery of course we would expect free delivery for that sort of price but it's absolutely crazy absolutely crazy pricing now if you were editing 4k video all day long then yes you know, you could justify spending that. If you were doing commercial videos, and I've talked about this in previous broadcasts, if you were going to recoup that investment in, say, three to six months' time, or maybe six months to a year's time, then go for it. You know, it justifies the purchase. But that is a lot of money. And dare I say it, you would be able to build out a Windows-based PC with far better or equal specs for probably half the price. And do you need it? Are you only doing 4K or 1080p video? If you are, then of course it's complete overkill. You can edit on a regular iMac like the one I've got behind me here, on a Mac Pro. Even this 13-inch MacBook Pro will actually edit 4K video quite comfortably. So it is just crazy, but I am interested. I'm going to you know, watch people's experiences with it, but I'm not going to get one into the studio myself. So let's take a look at some of the other chat. Uh, 5k for 5k says Troy Seishi. Very, very true indeed. Uh, David Hetworth says building a PC costs the same for the £9,040 model. Absolutely crazy prices, really is. But it is a nice machine, you know, it is a gorgeous machine and very, very high specification. I heard another journalist talking about it because somebody asked, you know, was it worth uh, getting when you can't upgrade it after the event? It's pretty much packed with what you need. You're going to configure this you know at time of purchase you're not going to really upgrade it yourself so uh, it's, it's you know something that's going to come out of the box and you're hopefully going to get sort of at least three to five years of use from it hopefully longer but i would give a five-year use case scenario on, on a machine like that uh, we've also got a question here from etchum uh, rofe which phone do you have uh, a oneplus 5t uh, I also have an iPhone 10 for testing purposes at the moment as well, and I also have the Asus Zenfone 4, which I'm currently reviewing. Uh, the OnePlus 5T is my currently uh, favourite smartphone of 2017. The best Android phone of 2017 is in fact uh, contradictory to my OnePlus 5T because I really rated the Razer phone the sort of best performing and best screen smartphone albeit a little bit bigger and the camera's letting it down a little bit. But that I gave my award for S best Android phone of 2017. Uh, and that answers your, your next question, uh, Etchum. Uh, which phone should I buy for $600? I'd be looking at either the Razer phone or the OnePlus 5T. So let's move on to the next topic for conversation. And it is indeed a, another smartphone orientated uh, chat. And this is regarding the Google Pixel 2. Now this applies to the Pixel 2 or the Pixel 2 XL and I just thought this was a very quick price reduction. I'm not sure if uh, Google are doing this just for the holiday season, so just in the run up to Christmas, or if they're doing it because they acknowledge that maybe they didn't quite hit the mark 
with the uh, quality of the screen on the Pixel 2 XL. They're currently taking £100 off. I'm pretty sure if I select the 64 gig model, we get £100 off. 128 gig model, we get uh, £100 off. Uh, we can also change the size. Oh, let's change all of this. Uh, let's not. Let's go back and then we we'll go into buy again. I think it's £50 off the smaller one. Yeah, there we go. So £50 off the smaller one in both capacities. So the smaller size Pixel 2, we're getting £50 off. And the larger Pixel 2 XL, we're getting £100 off. And as I say, I'm not sure if that just relates to uh, the run-up to the Christmas period. But I thought that was worth mentioning in this very broadcast because not only is it a little bit mad to uh, realise that a brand new smartphone that's only been out a very short time has been reduced in price already, so not great for people to order this early, uh, but also worth telling you because we're in the run-up to Christmas and I think you would appreciate if you were going to order one that you can now get it a little bit cheaper. Uh, I would be annoyed if I'd ordered one and there was already that price reduction. Uh, very annoyed. In fact, that happened with the uh, Google Home Mini. I've got a Google Home Mini sitting up on the shelf there, the little grey one with the uh, white part on the bottom. Very, very good product. Uh, but within a couple of weeks of me uh, ordering that, it was actually reduced in price. And in fact, you can get it for around about £32.99 now. And I think I paid £49.99. And a lot of people did order these early. Some people got them free of charge. Uh, with their Google Pixel 2 orders and Pixel 2 XL uh, but some people did buy them and then a couple of weeks later they reduced the price officially on the Google website and of course on third party websites as well. So a very good deal if you do want the Google Pixel uh, 2 or the larger Pixel 2 XL. Uh, Etchum Rolf says is it worth upgrading from the Pixel XL to the Pixel 2 XL? Well I would say probably not. Uh, purely because that original Pixel XL, I've heard from many, many users on Twitter and on other social platforms, and they're saying that their Pixel XL, the original one, is still running nice and fast from the, the day that they bought it. There's no discernible loss in speed. It still had really good cameras, the original one. Okay, it's not the latest and greatest specification, but if you already own one, unless you really have to have the very, very latest smartphone, I would probably say not. I would probably say wait another year for the Pixel 3 XL and hopefully they partner with somebody that can actually de deliver them a better quality screen. Maybe they go with a Samsung screen like a lot of manufacturers do including Apple on their iPhone 10 went with a Samsung uh, manufactured OLED screen. Uh, Raymond Moore is asking uh, how was your experience with the Asus phone so far, Dave? Raymond, you must have tuned in late. I've already covered that. I will just very quickly recap. Really loving the screen. Loving the uh, build quality. Uh, the, the actual uh, longevity of the battery. So battery life, really good. You easily get a day between charges. And the camera, although, albeit a, a lower resolution, uh, it does really well. It's got larger pixels, so it gathers a lot more light. And the, the photos look really nice indeed. I'll be doing my full review of the Asus Zenfone 4 uh, next Saturday, I think I've got it planned for, or definitely the latter part of this week. Uh, and I will cover it all in greater detail then and show you some photos on screen so you get to see the quality of the photos. So anyway, that is it for today's Monday Madness. I'm suffering a little bit from a cold, so I'm going to cut this one a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, before I do... Uh, sign off I will in all fairness because I normally do this for about 30 minutes I'll just take one last question that's just come in from uh, Etchon Rolf uh, can Nokia be a brand like before again yes I think they can I know that's a very short answer but they made some really good smartphones this year they didn't quite deliver uh, what we expected in terms of camera quality which is what Nokia are renowned for and I think once they focus in and really pump that camera quality up on the next range of smartphones from them they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. I think we're going to see some great phones from them in 2018. So that really is it. Thanks for tuning in for Monday Madness. I really do appreciate it. I will see you all in the next one.